This tutorial is to help you with three-point linkage mapping. And this first segment will be about determining gene order as the first step in three-point linkage mapping. So the whole purpose of three-point linkage mapping, the objective is to use data that will be presented to you. The data has been collected from an out, the outcome of a mapping test cross. And the purpose is to determine the order of three genes on a chromosome. They're linked together on a chromosome. And so determine the order of the genes and the relative distances between the genes. The data has been collected for you from a real experiment, and then you are processing the data on paper to figure out the genetic map. All right, so consider three linked genes in a specific plant species. We're going to call the allele for tall S, big S, and that's going to be dominant to the allele for short, little s. The allele, a different gene for flower color, the gene for flower color will be big Y is going to indicate red, little y will indicate yellow. And then a gene W where big W is waxy leaves, little w is soft leaves. Right, it can be any three genes, it doesn't matter. The important part is that the cross that's been performed already started with one parent that was triple heterozygote for all three genes, and then one parent is completely recessive, and that's why it's called a test cross. Although truly we already know the genotype of this parent. It's a triple heterozygote parent, a completely recessive parent. So those are crossed, those are mated, and then we get seeds and we plant the seeds and then we get all these offspring plants. And When they grow up we can assess whether they're tall or short, red flowers or yellow flowers, wax leaves or soft leaves. And so some of the um, offspring have different combinations of these traits. So 60 offspring have are tall, have red flowers and waxy leaves and so on. And then this data, I make I made the number um, come out to an even 2,000. Um, in real data, it would not be a nice round number probably. But all right, so that's your starting point. You'll be presented with um, phenotypic groups. These are allele combinations uh, or trait combinations in your offspring, and how many offspring had that exact combination of traits. The first thing you want to do, and sometimes this is already done for you, but the first thing that you want to do is fill in, instead of these descriptive phenotype words, you want to use a shorthand with the actual alleles. So we're going to call big S tall, little s short, big Y red, little Y yellow, big W waxy, little W soft. So we go through and we say, okay, if it's tall, red, and waxy, then it has to have a dominant, a big S, a big Y, and a big W. And those three alleles must have come from the heterozygote parent. And then the other chromosome, which I put a slash here, and then I list the chromosome that came from this parent. And this parent will always give a little s, a little y, a little w on its chromosome. So one chromosome from the mom, one chromosome from the dad. And these are what the offspring, now their genotypes are. So I've circled here all of these first chromosomes in the in the listing actually represent the chromosomes that came from the mom. And then these chromosomes all came from the dad. But do you see that they're all the same? So a lot of times we don't even list these. Okay, so we just shorthand it and we just show the chromosome that came from the mom. And that's going to be the one that is that we're going to work with or that's important for um, solving the problem. Now, a triple heterozygote parent, for example, big A, little a, big B, little B, big C, little c, or any letters that follow that pattern. If you have a triple heterozygote parent, the alleles can be in different configurations. You could have big A, big B, and big C on one chromosome and little a, little b, little c on another chromosome. That could be your triple heterozygote parents, two homologous chromosomes, how the, the alleles are laid out. 
or you could have the big A, the big B on this one, but with a little C, and then this one has little a, little b, big C. That would still be triple heterozygote. This would still be triple heterozygous, and this would still be triple heterozygous. So you don't really know from the beginning what the exact layout of your triple heterozygote parent is. In this case, big S, little s, big Y, little y, big W, little w. And it doesn't really matter which one it is, but you will determine which one it is as you do the problem, and that will just help you with some of the steps. So no matter what the layout is of the triple heterozygous parent, you'll be able to figure out the exact layout for this problem, and then use that information to help you solve the next steps. So when you look at this, the first step is to identify the offspring groups that have a parental allele combination. And we're talking really just about this parent here, because remember that we're ignoring the chromosome from this parent. So when we say parental now, we're really just talking about this triple heterozygote parent. This triple heterozygote parent passed a chromosome that had an S, a Y, and a W to each of its children, but it could have passed you know, a big S or a little s, a big Y or a little Y or a big W or a little W in different combinations because of crossing over. It can pass any combination of those alleles to the children. So the offspring that have a parental allele combination will always be the ones that are most numerous. In other words, you look at these numbers here. 805 offspring had this combination. And that's the biggest, you know, one of the biggest numbers. 813 had this combination. So you pick out the two biggest numbers, and those represent the two chromosomes that came from this parent without any crossing over. So what we would say is that the, that the layout of the chromosomes would be big S, little y, big W on one, and then the other one is little s, big y, little w. And that would be how this parent's chromosomes were laid out. And so what I usually do is write the word parental, or some people just put the letter P next to those groups. So you kind of circle and label the parental groups the groups that have a parental combination of alleles. All right, so in this specific cross, the triple heterozygote parent must have had this configuration. Big S, little y, big W, because 805 offspring had that allele combination that they got from that parent. And little s, big y, little w, because 813 offspring had that combination. So those are your two um, chromosomes that came from that parent without any crossing over. However, this doesn't indicate the gene order. In other words, we know on one chromosome we have these alleles, but it doesn't necessarily mean the Y genes in the middle because we haven't figured that out yet. But we know that these alleles are on one homologous chromosome. These alleles would have been on the other homologous chromosome in the parent. All right. So in order to determine gene order, we've already identified our parentals just by the largest numbers. Then you're going to identify the offspring that have a double crossover allele combination. And these offspring will be the ones that are the least numerous, the smallest numbers. So here the 8 and the 10 represent the smallest groups represent chromosomes that came from this parent, but they only came from this parent after a double crossover in meiosis. So when the eggs were forming, you know, starting from these, this allele configuration, when the gametes were forming, there was a double crossover before these chromosomes were passed into the eggs. So they'll always be the smallest numbers. Now I've set these up so they're next to each other, but they could be anywhere in the list. Okay? It doesn't matter. Now, so it's for determining gene order. We have S, we have Y, we have W. We don't know which gene is in the middle of the order as it appears on the actual chromosome. What I usually tell students to do is visually match up a parental 
allele combination with one of the double crossover allele combinations such that two out of the three alleles match. Now in this example I put the matches next to each other so that you can see them but you may have to look a little harder in, in, other, in other problems. So for example these first two, this parental and this DCO uh, allele combinations match. Do you see how they match? The S's are the same, big S and the same and big S here and the Y's are the same, little y and little y, those match. But the W's don't match, there will always be one that doesn't match. Okay. Then when you look at this pair up, this S and this S are the same, little s and little s, big Y and big Y, but this is a big W and this is a little W, so that one's not matching. Okay. If you tried to match them up wrong, like if you tried to um, let me get a pen. If you try to match this one with this one, what you'll see is the S's don't match, the Y's don't match, but the W's do match. But that doesn't work because you're trying to match two out of three. So then you would try this match and that one would work. So what I do is I just tell students just pick one parental, one DCO, and see if two of the alleles are the same. If not, go with the other pairing. But when you find the two that are the same, like these two are the same, I mean they're not the same, but these two match up two out of three, and these two match up two out of three. Okay, so we did that pairing, and what we're going to find is that the one that didn't match up was this W, right, on both, on both times. So the W then is the one that belongs in the middle. Okay. So the one that doesn't match up would be the one that you would then move into the center of the order, uh, but we'll get to that with the next tutorial. All right, so stop and do the practice questions that are listed under the Quiz Me section, and make sure you understand those before you go on to the next tutorial segment.